Hello, welcome to the Lily Loves Crochet podcast, episode 45, I believe. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, if you've not been here before, my name is Emma and this is my crochet podcast or crochet crafts and books and, and anything else I've been doing really. How are you all? I hope you're all well. It's been a very long time since I filmed um, a podcast. Um, yeah, all sorts of things going on. I did a little um, update I think a few months ago and I've been meaning to come on and, and update you all with things I've been doing but to be honest with you it had slowed down a lot anyway so um I think I've got I might do an end of summer vlog as well um because I bought loads of um like vintage books and things like that over the summer from the car boot sales and I thought maybe I'll do a little some vlog footage of some of the places that we've been so I might do that um, and get that out. So I think today I'm just going to show you um, some projects that have come to the forefront of my mind recently. Rather than try and remember where I was and what I was doing last time I podcast. So I apologise if there was something you were particularly waiting to hear about. Um, I will try and get things up together. I've also been having a, a good clear out, some decluttering. Um, if I've got any footage of that, I'll pop that on the vlog as well, I think. So I think probably I will just get started with some... Oh, the light's changing. That's... Sorry, the um, sun's going in and out. We'll persevere. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to get started and show you some of the things I've, I've made recently or projects that have finished. Um, firstly, this one. Isn't that beautiful? Look at those sleeves. They look amazing. Um... I hope that you can see that. This, I, I've just been looking for the um, pattern book that this came from. I think it was one of the um, Sheepier's bookazines, and I'm pretty sure it was the romance issue. I will find the details and pop them in the show notes or links below. It's beautiful. It had taken me a long time to finish it, not because it was complicated, it really wasn't, um, but it was a sort of Victorian kind of in inspired top and it sort of cut in there and then um, there were some more beautiful details, but I decided it just wouldn't be the type of top that I would wear, so I've, what I've done, I'm just going to scooch back. I'll stand up. I just cropped mine here because I'm fairly short and this is where I like my my jumpers to end so that I don't have to tuck them in and they don't sort of swamp me. But and here's the problem and I think it probably won't stop me wearing it but um, I'm annoyed <laughs> by it. So I decided to not do any of the fancy stuff and just make it like a boxy tee. So I really only use that beautiful pattern for the arms um, and I did make it a bit bigger so I am a little bit gapy here it's fine because you you know you have to wear a vest under it but I really wanted those um just sleeves to be the feature and I thought if I do it like this you know it's a lot of time making garments you want to you want to know that you're going to wear them don't you so I thought this would be perfect for work I could wear it over a dress um or just with some trousers with a shirt so um, I'm not too worried that it's kind of gapy there and actually, oh, you know, I prefer that <laughs> a bit of room to breathe. But um, the thing that is annoying me is by the time I got round to um, finishing the top, um, the reason I put it down was because I'd run out of yarn and I was using um, paint box, the one I always use, my favourite, I think it's um, Champagne White paint box cotton DK um, and I think I'd gone up half a size or a size from the recommended but when I came to ordering new yarn I was using um, stashed yarn and it was so old obviously that the um, the lot numbers had moved on and look can you see the difference in colour I really can and not only that it's the, it's slightly different texture. It's the same yarn. But look, can you see that band there? Yeah, that, so that's the same colour, obviously different lot numbers. Um, and there's obviously several 
probably several years in between. I'm really kind of annoyed about that. It's not the end of the world, but uh, yeah, look, you can just faintly see a band. So let me know, would that stop you wearing that? I don't think I'm going to let, let it stop, but I don't know if you can even see, but it is, this um, cotton is really sort of soft and this is a bit, it's a, just a bit tougher. So I'll put it in the wash and um, see. Anyway, instead of carrying on with the pattern, I just work, continued working those um, double or treble crochets all the way down. And then I just finished off with a row of single crochet just to keep it nice and loose and just how I like to wear it really. So but these sleeves, they just look beautiful, don't they? Uh, oh, I love that. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. Um, I will put all the, the links below for you to have a look at. Um, and I must take some, some photos of some things. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm really out of practice, I'm sorry. I'm back to, I thought that was coffee. It's tea. And it's cold. Um, I'm just going to check the microphone's working <laughs> just a minute. Yeah. Everything seems to be in order. Let's carry on. Um, the next thing I will show you was, uh, I think, oh, let's show you this. This is beautiful. This is a little headscarf. It's from, it was from Simply Crochet Magazine, one of their um, summery ones. It's a lovely, just got a granny stitch and, um, you know, very simple. And then a little sort of, what I really liked was that sort of pico edging. Isn't that lovely? So, um, yeah, that was beautiful. And that was a really lovely, you know, one of those makes where you just want the satisfaction of finishing a project. So that's what um, that gave me. Um, it's designed by, um, on Instagram, she's um, sowing the seeds of, Send the seeds of why do I want to say love? <laughs> oh, it is sowing the seeds of love. Um, that felt like a song. Natalie, Natalie Beard, who is a really, really talented designer. So that's just lovely. Um, again, I'll link the issue number. I mean, we're out of summer now, aren't we? But they're, they're lovely for the beach, you know, when you get those. Um, those, well I do because I've got curly head frizzies so it's lovely and actually I've got another one here that my friend um sent me isn't that lovely that's a knitted one I don't know if you ever remember um my attempts at knitting this from a pattern book that I'd got in the library years ago I think it might have even been in a blog and um my friend very kindly um offered to send send one to me and that's that's something that ties up um I'll link the, the vlog with the pattern, but yeah. So I did actually wear that as well this summer. So um, what else have we got? Um, the other project that's kind of finished, but not, and you can give me your opinions on it, is um, this. And again, you may remember this from last year when I was making it, I suppose. Um, it's this lovely V top sort of um not v top vest top with that bobble and diamond pattern that I love there we go you can see the texture there um and I think at the time we were I was talking about I was unsure about what to do with the back do I continue the bobbles on the back and everyone was like well that that would be uncomfortable I think and it would be fine to have a plain back so I did a plain back for that um, with the higher the higher neck. And um, I mean, this is really a vanity project. This is just something that I wanted to wear, um, you know, over my work shirts and that. Anyway, I think where I'm at now is I, the original design, I had the idea to pop um, little flowers around the, so some of the diamonds have got bobbles in the middle. And uh, lots of different coloured, and I've what I've done is a few, just to give you an idea. 
and these flowers just sort of attach around the bubbles so that the bubble makes the center of the flower if you does that make sense let's see have a look Okay, like that. Um, and then I've got lots of lovely, um, pretty sort of pastel colours. What do we think? Flowers or no flowers? I think I could write the pattern up with both. Um, I think I'd probably get more wear out of it if it was more neutral, but I think that the flowers, once they're all on, will add a really pretty touch. So, um, I think I've just talked myself into that so I'm going to <laughs> add the flowers to that I think I've made them all um lots of different colors and I had them all laid out on the um the top actually it was on the desk um so I've just taken a photo um and um because they will although they sort of go around they're made to go around they would need sewing on anyway so um yeah so that's that. Um, I haven't sewn the edges either. Haven't um, just because I think it'd be easier to um, sew on the flowers if I can get get to the back. So that's that. Um, I just need. I probably just need a good couple of hours just to sew those flowers on and then seam up the edges. Um, so um, there is no pattern for that one at the moment. That's something that I'm just um, experimenting with. Um, and it's, you know, been um, put away for a long time. So I have got lots of notes. I just need to find them all. <laughs> Sound like a right mess. Um, and then um, another finished object. And this was going to be um, a little collaboration project with Miss Rabbit Yarns, but they very sadly had to um, close their business, I think, beginning of the year. So it never got released. Um, so it was all finished and the pattern was all um, written up uh, over Christmas. I must have been working on that. So January, gosh. Um, but it's these lovely little wrist warmers roughly wrist warmers and they were designed with some of um lovely miss rabbit yarns i don't know what the color is but um i'm guessing it was four ply it feels like it can't remember what the yarn was called let me uh, let me pop one on so you can have a look I remember now they're so beautiful and again um I've designed them to so they've got the ruffles or you can just have them as simple mitts without the ruffles <laughs> and actually they're lovely and warm let me put the other one on so I think I will um I might just make this up in some more yarn since you can't get the um the beautiful Miss Rabbit yarn anymore. So I think actually that's what I'll do. I'll um here we go. My watch is making that look a bit clumpy, but aren't they lovely? Oh, I feel very fancy. Um yeah, I mean they're wrist warmers they're not going to keep your fingers cold they I really when I was designing them I wanted something that would catch your um your thumb because otherwise that may sometimes makes your um gloves move about but other than that the point was really to keep your wrists you know when you wear I don't know about you but if I'm out walking the dog in the winter that I find that I get cold around here but I like my fingers to be free all the time um I don't really like wearing gloves if I'm honest so they were designed and actually they do keep your wrists lovely and warm that that yarn does so but you can just see how they the ruffles, you know, there's a lot of space around your hands. These aren't going to be tight fitted around your fingers. Um, I mean, they're not gapy, but they sort of fit, you know, they're really well fitted up to there. And then you get this lovely ruffle, which opens up the stitches a bit. So you, you do have that space. You could carry on with the pattern um, with, and not have the ruffles and, you know, take it up to there. They would be closer fitting. Um, but yeah, they they look really lovely, and considering it's that 
floor play or maybe because it's that floor play they, they you've got that really lovely fit but they also because of that stitch pattern you know I've got my Apple watch on look and you know I've got it over there no problem so they're lovely so I'll take some photos of those I think I'm just going to they were it was the pattern was tested and, and everything and it's all it's all written up ready to go um the pdf's done I took some photographs but like I said because you can't get that yarn anymore I think I might just have another go with some different yarn and actually I have not bought yarn so there won't be a, <laughs> a yarn haul in this video but I did buy um, and this is from All About The Yarn. I don't even know where I bought this from now, but I must have been with Kyra. Is that in frame? Yes, it is. Uh, All About The Yarn. I don't even know if that's still there, because like I said, but I did buy this from the Scheme Queen because, um, and this is called um, Salvage Crush. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's a four ply fingering. So this, um, is, which I'm assuming was what that, that yarn was. Um, but look how autumnal those colors are. They're just beautiful, aren't they? Um, so I did buy this last winter, I think, with a view to making myself another um, set of those wrist warmers because I wanted to give a set to my mum. Uh, so I think I'm going to do that. So that's going to be my next project. I'm going to make a set of the wrist warmers because, you know, now's the time, isn't it? Um, autumn is in the air. We're not quite there yet. The sun's out today. It's still quite warm out. I went out this morning. I still had, I just had my, my top on. Um, but I do find first thing in the mornings and last thing at night, um, I start to get cold. So, um, yeah, so now might be the time. So I'm going to make those. I'll um, wind that up later today, actually, and get going on those. So that's another little project. And then I can get that pattern up fairly quickly because, like I said, it's it's all done. Um, if I can remember how to use my Etsy. <laughs> my Ravelry accounts um and then another whip that I worked on at the weekend actually um is this this is another jumper and again it's uh oh, look at that lovely color look it's just autumn isn't it in a in a yarn and actually I do have another ball of that this is a simple like um what's that called a yoke is that a yoke neck Maybe. I think it is because you, well, there's no seams. So yeah, I think that's what it is. And I had started this years ago, years and years ago. And um, what I did is I just started. I started making and I didn't measure and I didn't, you know, work any measurements out. I just thought, well, I'm just going to create this top and I'll just try it on as I go. So what I had done is I had created the yoke bit and then I'd gone down a bit more so I'd sort of split for the arms I'd gone down a bit more and then I, I think I must have panicked and I started adding sleeves to one of them and these sleeves were massive because obviously the yoke part was too big and I think then I just popped the yarn down and the whole project and thought Ugh, you know that's something that needs to be unwound and you know frogged and whatnot so I left it anyway a couple of weekends ago, I was sorting out yarn. Like I, I had a big D stash really, and um, this project was. I also went through a load of whips, ones that I was never going to return to, you know, and just really had a good tidy out. Anyway, this project was one of them, and I was just going to sort of get rid of it, and I just thought, yeah, I still really like it. I still love the yarn. I tried it on, and actually, you know, it fits like a nice snug jumper, and again. Um, you know, if I don't do them too big, I can wear them over like dresses and things and then just easy to take on and off at work. So I unwound it all. I went right back to about here and um, I then split where it would fit. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't measure before. I split where it would fit. Um, it's still 
when I put it on, it's actually, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. And then I think, you know, because I, I quite like in the winter, I do quite like or like tank tops and short sleeve jumpers um, because I do go hot and cold. You know, I hate, I hate being cold, but it's not generally my arms that are, uh, that are getting cold. So I do like that style anyway. So I'm not sure whether I'll add sleeves to this. I probably will, um, even if they're just maybe short sleeves. We'll see. But I have got all the yarn left. And so I've worked up, I've redone the split. I've, you know, worked down for the body. I've got a few more, um, a few more rows to do for the body. And then I look at some arms and I may even do a collar on this one. Or maybe some something roughly, but quite open. Hmm, I don't know. But that yarn is lovely. Look at that. Now this is one of those ones I was really, really fond of working with. And I've got I've got a ball of it down here. Still got the label on. It's uh James C. Brett Rustic Aaron Tweed. It's 77% acrylic, 20% wool, and 3% viscose. Machine washable. Machine <laughs> machine was washable and it was one of these really big 400 gram balls and I had obviously had two of them so I think I probably thought that um you know a jumper would be an ideal project but I don't even think that I will use a whole one of these for this jumper because there's still quite a lot of yarn left um for that so that's quite good. I've got a couple of those giant. I just, I think they're really affordable. Um, yes, I just think they're really affordable and um, and the yarn is nice. Like I'm quite sensitive to wool, really, a lot of wool yarns. I don't like them up around my neck. Um, these don't feel too bad. I mean, I probably, well, I probably wouldn't make a scarf out of it, but it feels fine to have um, on my, you know, up up here that's fine so yeah so that's another one that I am going to finish so yeah these are the projects that I'm working on I think I'm just going to focus on those they're, they're making me happy um I'm not going to start anything new I'm going to finish my jumper I'm going to make another set of wrist warmers and I'm going to add some flowers to my vest and yeah I'm just small small projects, small goals, <laughs> see how I get on. Um, you know, for a long time, I just didn't feel like crocheting at all. Um, you know, I mentioned, I think, in the last update that it's been a really tough year for all sorts of reasons. Um, you know, I know loads of people are struggling too. So, yes, I'm slowly getting, I feel like I'm slowly feeling creative again, which is really good. But I don't want to push myself either to do things um, and the last project I've brought to show you also coincides with a new crochet book that I bought and it is beautiful um, I it's an amigurumi book there we have the startings of a little leg <laughs> and the book is this one I've marked the page I'm on probably should have done that Grab a bookmark a minute. It's this one. <laughs> Lula and her amigurumi friends, a quirky club of crochet characters, um, based on drawings by is that Noor Abdallah. Is that more or no? I can't really read that. Um, it's beautiful. So, I mean, the whole book is lovely, but this book, these crochet patterns have been designed around these illustrations. Look. So these characters have been designed and then... Oh, I can't... Oh, it's Dasha and Kate have created characters from them. They are just beautiful. Every single one. I, I really was struggling with which one to pick. Um, I 
probably should have gone with Lula, but I didn't. Um, there's, so there's Lula there. And, you know, the um, instructions come with cloves um, and all sorts of things that you can to make. But I was really torn between making Opa, which is her grandfather. Look at him. Oh, gosh, he's amazing. Even down to his little leg hairs. Um, and then the other one I really wanted to make. Oh, they're just amazing. And her little friends. Beautiful. And who else have we got in here? I mean, there's everyone from, look at Martha with her little bat wings <laughs> in her fancy dress. They're just lovely, all of them really lovely. But I, I, I decided to make Gary. <laughs> Gary is Lula's neighbour. He is partner of Huddy and the proud father of their daughter Maya and their dog Yo-Yo. He used to be a sailor but now that he's retired he's dedicated himself to growing his, uh, his own organic produce in the garden. You can always ask him for some great eco-friendly tips. So there's Gary's. I'm trying not to show the pattern. Sorry so I'm it's great. Look at his beard. I just love it. And um, what I liked about Gary is he has got a body of um, tattoo, tattoos. Can you see those floral tattoos that are under his shirt? Just, it's just amazing. So I started... Um, I started him on holiday and actually I took, it was so funny, I think I took four books on holiday and two crochet projects and I read one book and did very little crochet <laughs> at all. <laughs> so um, anyway, I made a start. I have done his head. Um, the pattern, I think, tells you to start with the body. But I, again, I was struggling to get hold of the yarn. Um, what does it say to use? Um, fingering weight yarn. Um, I didn't have any fingering weight yarn and I wanted to start immediately. So I think I'm working with DK. And I had lots of the colours, so obviously I had a black, um, which I'm going to use for his beard and his um, shoes. And I had this blue, um, which would, you know, looked great for his trousers and his hat. And then I also have a pink. So the only trouble, I suppose, is that his cardigan is supposed to be cream and pink. And I've used cream for his body. So my Gary won't be as tanned as this Gary. But I just wanted to start and I didn't really want to have to wait. So I'm just using it. I'm just using the yarn that I have. And I think, you know, it, it makes me happy. <laughs> it makes me happy to use all the, um, the bits of cotton that I've got. So, and I have loads of this sort of um, champagne-y colour, as we know. Let me just do a comparison. Yeah, still darker than my top. Yeah, sad times, guys. So um, there's his head. He's got to have some eyebrows and some cheeks embroidered on him. The eyes were embroidered as well, but since I'm going to be keeping him, I've put safety eyes there um, on him, just some little safety eyes. So I, I made the head fast because these um, patterns aren't supposed to be very tall. He's supposed to be 20... 21 and a half centimetres, which, what's that? About that big? Yeah, about that big. Um, but my Gary's head is probably 10 centimetres, so I feel like he's going to be quite big. I don't mind that at all. So um, bear that in mind if you're going to um, to make the patterns. Um, I think the characters are fairly small. Um, but yeah, so I need to get going with him. I've I've done his head, um, like I said, just so I could see what size he would come out at. And um, I 
think don't think yeah there is no gauge there's um it just says the size it will be when you when you make with the indicated yarn and the hook was uh 1.5 millimeter crochet hook yeah small and i am using dk yarn and a three and a half so mine's going to be significantly bigger he also has a little dog with a, a little um, dalmatian wearing a sweater as a pet so i might have to make that afterwards so yeah that book is beautiful i will link to it below um i really recommend it the illustrations are beautiful all the characters are beautiful um, I think they've done such an amazing job of bringing those illustrations to life. I really, really, really recommend that. So um, that's it really. So I've not really bought any new yarn. I've not bought um, really any wool apart from that lovely ball there. I've really been trying to use up what I've got, look at projects that, you know, have sort of fallen by the way and um, just have a tidy up really and get inspired again um so yes hopefully i will be back soon with um you know some updates on some of these because that would be nice wouldn't it <laughs> i feel like once i'm in the swing of recording regularly things will get easier again for me um might not be fortnightly for a while we'll see we'll see how things go you know i'm still i'm working at the library and um you know, children have all gone back to school now, which is nice. Um, my eldest has moved out. She moved home for a year after she finished her degree and she has now moved out to complete her master's. She's down at Sussex University. So, yes, it's kind of sad, but also, you know, it's good for her. Um, and, yeah, you know, I have a house of teenagers now, so I don't really have... I have a house full. I have two teenagers at home. <laughs> I don't have, um, you know, a lot of time in the evening because they like to stay up late. <laughs> they, they, um, they stay up later than me. Well, yeah, they do. Um, I mean, Lulu's pretty good. She's she's only thirteen, so um, she generally goes up when I tell her. But um, yes, the sixteen-year-old really just just has a mind of his own now. So we generally sit down, Lulu and I, about half eight, nine-ish, to watch something on the telly. Um, and it's normally something that she's already watching, like one of her Netflix series or something. So I haven't really even been watching any TV. Um, we've been watching The Bake Off together because we love that. But other than that, I know. So if you've got any um, television recommendations, let me know because I don't, don't think I've really watched anything for a while. Um what else have we done i think that's it i have been reading some books so we'll do some book talk quickly um so if that's not your thing please feel free to switch off <laughs> and um, i will see you again soon um but if you'd like to know what i've been reading then listen on um actually first of all i'm going to show you this copy of um pride and prejudice that my daughter bought me for my birthday it's beautiful look at that look at that um i've got lots of copies of um austin's you know books but i did not have a it's like a special copy of pride and prejudice or even a really good copy i have a very old tatty copy so um it was on my wish list and my daughter bought me this one the illustrations are just beautiful and inside it has lots of little um sort of interactive bits and pieces that oh so i've just something's come out that go with the book um, i don't know where that came that's just a little postcard look um what else have we got in here there's a it looks like a little map of london i've not opened that and look Elizabeth Bennett, there's a copy of the, the letter. It's in, oh, I just love it. Um, so there are lots of these. It reminds me a bit of the um, the Peter Pan and the Harry Potter interactive books that we've got. But this one's for grown-ups. <laughs> um, it's just beautiful. Lovely. And there are illustrations throughout, but mostly like 
um, little flowers on the pages, which I just think are beautiful. Um, let's see if I can like here. Yeah. Can you see those little touches? They're lovely, aren't they? So that's that's really lovely. So um, yeah, if you've got some Jane Austen fans, I don't know if they do more in this series, but that one in particular I think is beautiful. Um, and then I've been reading, what have I been reading? I read, oh, I've read a really good book called um, Lessons in Chemistry. Let me find out who the author is a minute. I don't have a copy here because... Um, I gave mine away, I passed mine on. Um, who's the author? Bonnie Garmes. I'll pop, pop a picture of it here. It's really good. Um, it's about a woman called Elizabeth who, I think it's the 1960s. She's way ahead of her time. She's a brilliant scientist, but because of her gender is always overlooked. Um, but she's very, um, you know, she knows what she wants, she knows what she's capable of. Um, but she's consistently held back. Um, you know, there's, um, yeah, just for her gender, really. But there is a, a sort of um, a particularly um, upsetting scene at the beginning of, um, you know, a sort of uh, a, a sexual attack. Um, anyway, she meets this other scientist and they just have this lovely relationship. They don't get married, but she finds herself pregnant and um, and then later on she finds herself alone. And, you know, she's just, she needs to earn an income. So she takes on this job because she cooks these really nutritious meals for her daughter. Um, and it's very scientific the way she does it, you know, oh, you need these minerals, you need these, but she makes these lovely meals for her daughter and um they keep getting stolen by the school bully <laughs> so uh anyway she ends up with her own tv show it's just that beginning aside which is a little bit sad and you know a little bit disturbing it's just a really really good book and you know um i really enjoyed reading it it's very i suppose it highlights a lot of the issues of the time but um, you know, with I suppose there's a lots of elements of sexism in there, and it's just really, really good. I just I really enjoyed it, so I recommend that. Then the other book I really enjoyed recently was um, Electra by Jennifer Saint. That was one of the ones I showed on my update, the big haul, the retelling of Electra. I really love all of those sort of. Um, Greek retellings, um, the myths and all that sort of stuff. So I um, I really enjoyed that. That was good. I flew through that as well. So that's two that I've read recently. Um, what else? I've also pre-ordered a lot of books for new, new releases. So I'll show you some of the pre-orders that have come in recently um, that I haven't got around to reading yet, but I've got... Um, Godmersham Park by Jill Hornby. Jill Hornby wrote um, Miss Austin, which I really enjoyed. So, um, and this was um, this was a little. I think this was a Waterstones edition because it's got the fancy leaves. So um, I bought this one. I have not read it yet, but it says based on a true a true story, a wonderfully original and emotionally complex novel set in eighteen o four, following governess Annie Sharp and her friendship with Henry and Jane Austen. So if you liked Miss Austin, you might like that one as well. I also bought the new Lisa Jewell. Um, I feel like this one is a follow-on from The Family Upstairs. I really like Lisa Jewell's writing. She doesn't come under crime in the library, which um, surprises me sometimes but she always is in general fiction so if you like a mystery something that's not too um gruesome you know I I'll always recommend her because she's she does real page turners you know if you want to be propelled on by a book then I would definitely recommend Lisa Jewell and um yeah The Family Upstairs was a really good book um and this seems to be a follow-up so yeah, I'm excited to read that. Um, 
Oh gosh, it's more than I thought. Then I've got the House of Fortune by Jesse Burton, which is the follow-up to The Miniaturist. I've put off reading this because I'm wondering now, it's been a long time since I read The Miniaturist, should I reread The Miniaturist first? I don't know. If you've read that, let me know. Do you need to have read The Miniaturist? I don't think so because I think it moves on... Um, I think it's moved on, so it's sort of further down the family line. Anyway, and then um, Maggie O'Farrell has a new book out, and I love her writing. Um, she wrote Hamnet. Um, she, well, she's written loads of lovely books. Um, so this one says, um, In the winter of 1561, Lucrezia, Duchess of Ferrara, is taken on an unexpected visit to a country villa by her husband, Alfonso. As they sit down to dinner in the icy hall, it occurs... It occurs to Lucrezia that Alfonso has a sinister purpose in bringing her here. He intends to kill her. Ooh. So that's the um, marriage portrait. So I have that. And then lastly, <laughs> I have um, the new Ian McEwan novel, Lessons. Um, which I pre-ordered. Um, this one says, when the world is still counting the cost of the Second World War and the Iron Curtain has descended, young Roland's life is turned upside down. 2,000 miles from his mother's protective love, stranded at an unusual boarding school, his vulnerability attracts his piano teacher, Miriam Cornell, leaving scars as well as memory, a memory of love that will never fade. 25-year-old's Roland wife mysteriously vanishes, leaving him alone with their baby son. He is forced to confront the reality of his ruthless, ruthless existing, existence. As the radiation from the Chernobyl disaster spreads across Europe, he begins a search for answers that looks deeply into his family history and will last for the rest of his life. Um, I always enjoy Ian McEwan's writing. I always think that they're... I just... I like his stories and they're not page turners generally but they're always really well written I I just I there's just something about his writing that I always enjoy so I grabbed that so they should keep me going for the next few months um <laughs> I I mean I didn't buy many new books I don't buy many new books to be honest with you I work at the library although I work in a very small library so um we don't often get the new books straight away um so, yeah, I sort of at the beginning of the year, I, I have a look and see what's coming out and I try and pre-order a few that I know I will enjoy. So, um, because I, I I do prefer to, to buy my books secondhand if I can, if I'm going to keep them, but it's not always possible. And sometimes that actually there's another one downstairs that I forgot to bring up. Anyway, we'll save that for next time. <laughs> So that is it, I think. Um, I will see you again soon. Um, I hope you're all well um, and that this year has been kind to you. Um, and I will be back in a few weeks with, a, with some updates on what I've been making and reading. And hopefully I will have finished a few of those books to tell you about. And I will also pop, I think, maybe, yeah, an end of summer vlog with some footage from our, um, our lovely holiday to Cornwall. That was beautiful. And um, some of the places we've been over the summer, really just for the memories. <laughs> but I'll pop that up. So I will see you all again soon. Um, take care. Bye.